Good morning, welcome. Welcome to the Federated Church of Norfolk. It's so good to see a few more faces here as people get vaccinated and come back. We're glad you're joining us for our Palm Sunday service. I used to love teaching Sunday school at this time of year when the kids would get excited about Palm Sunday. We'd all walk around shouting, the King is coming, the King is coming. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. And they would parade around with their palms, poking each other, of course, as happy as can be. And then we would sit down and tell more stories about Jesus, the wonderful, amazing stories of the one who came and changed everything. This week, we do have a Tenebrae service here and on Zoom on Thursday evening. It will include communion, so you may want to prepare that at home if you are watching from there. On Good Friday, our beautiful sanctuary will be open from 12 to 3 for prayer and peaceful meditation. You're welcome to take a few minutes to stop by and enjoy the peace here, especially if you have not been in our sanctuary for a while or ever. You're all welcome. Next Saturday, the Easter Bunny will be here from 12 to 2 for a visit and pictures out near the Mission Garden. And we will also have some activities crafts and goodies for any children who sign up to attend. Next Sunday, Easter, we have two services planned, one on the town hill at 8 a.m. and the second at 10 a.m. right here in our sanctuary and on Zoom. For the 8 a.m., you may bring a chair if you like. We expect that service to be a little shorter, probably about 30 minutes, and we will have plenty of music to sing to outside too. Please sign up or online or call the church if you plan to attend either of these services so we can plan accordingly using proper COVID guidelines. Please be sure to read your newsletters and check out the website to stay connected to everything happening here at FCOM. Today, we thank Katie Seidel for our musical pieces. We appreciate you, Katie. And we appreciate each and every one who is participating in our upcoming Easter services. Everything takes a little longer yeah. happen because of recording and preparation. So thank you for your gifts of time and talent. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the meditation and lighting of the candles. Let us all cry out, Hosanna in the highest. Save us, Lord, we pray. For that is what Hosanna means. Save us now, we pray. Please join me in the call to worship. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, oh give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. 
Open the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna, Hosanna. Please join me in the prayer of invocation in the Lord's Prayer. With great joy, we welcome you, Lord Jesus. Our journey has been long, and we long for you to enter us and make us into your holy city. You come into our hearts and our lives humbly, patiently, encouraging us to learn and grow, to walk in the light of new life of hope and healing. Open our hearts this morning to hear your words as we sing praise to you. We call out to you for your salvation. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. All this as we pray the words we are taught together saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see such a nice number of people here today. This is beautiful. And I'd also like to thank Barbara for the lovely altar display this morning. It's just gorgeous. Thank you, Barbara. This uh, morning's readings are from Isaiah and from Matthew. And we will begin with the Isaiah. It's part of uh, the third part of Isaiah, um, which is written during the time of the exile, the third of fourth parts. And it gives a sign of hope in an otherwise desperate, desperate situation that Israel is in. It clarifies the vocation of God's servant. But whatever we sure, whether the servant is of all Israel, God's people or an individual, it doesn't matter. It covers all of the aspects. God has given the servant the ability to hear and to speak a word to sustain the weary. The servant has been faithful and obedient, even though that meant suffering persecution. Yet the servant is confident and trusts God for vindication and deliverance. 
Jesus appears to have identified closely with this passage, especially the rejection and suffering of the servant. Then in Matthew, we're going to hear the word yashana, that is a Hebrew word, and it means deliver now. The two words put together, yasha and na, means deliver now. Basically, it says, save me now. And there is an interesting link between that word and our everyday thinking of God today. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem began with a final, uh, began the final ascent to the cross, entering a city in a victory parade. A conquering king would ride a stallion, but this one comes on a borrowed donkey, a symbol of peace. It indicates the humility that is well as his true messiahship. The ending is anticlimactic. The business between Jesus and the welcoming throng is unfinished. For sure, it is indeed unfinished. Holy Week takes us to a condemnation and a crucifixion on Good Friday. The scripture lesson about the grain of wheat dying so that a great harvest is very possible is the setting of this context as the crowds grow on Good Friday. We shall begin with the reading from Isaiah 50, 4 through 9. My Lord Yahweh, God has given me the tongue of disciples, that I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. He wakens me with morning by morning. He wakens my ear to the listening as a disciple. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not disobedient nor did I turn back. I gave my back to those who strike me and my cheeks to those who pluck out my beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. For the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I am not disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I will not be ashamed. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up to each other. Who has a case against me? Let me draw near to me. Let them draw near to me. I behold the Lord God helps me. Who is he who condemns me? Behold, they will all wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them. This is the word of the Lord. Blessed to our understanding. Today's act of giving, I want to thank everyone for sending their donations to the church. Like all people of Israel, we are invited to the great feast that God offers us. God, through Jesus' words, call us to carry the bounty of the feast out into the world by the way we treat those around us with love and empathy. We gather our offering to you, Lord, through this church, that its mystery may help and make your kingdom visible in the world around us. This morning's gifts shall now be given and received.
Will you be in prayer with me? Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks with grateful hearts for lives transformed through your love revealed in the one whose birth and resurrection we await once more. Jesus Christ, we offer these gifts and the service of our lives, praying that we may be, they may be used to transform the lives of those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. This morning's gospel from Matthew 21, 1 to 11, the story that we all know very well, hear it again with new meaning. When they had approached Jerusalem, had come to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie and them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you gentle and mounted upon a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed, and brought the donkey and the colt and laid their coats on them, and he sat on the coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats on the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. The crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Blessed to our understanding. Will you be in prayer with me? May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be with you and be thy rock and thy redeemer. Amen. They shouted, Yashana, Yashana, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. The very results-oriented society that they lived in. Jesus came riding on a donkey with a crowd with him. And as he went by, and the crowd went by, they probably turned back from where he came, looking down the road for the army. Messiahs come with armies in those days. Jesus was coming into a world where might makes right. Messiahs had armies. They would come and deliver people from oppression. That is what a Messiah would mean. A prophet, a priest, and a king. And a king has an army. They probably said to each other, what? No army? What is this? A group of ragtag people of all walks of life following him? Jew and Gentile alike? And um, some people probably just coming to Jerusalem for the festival, the Passover festival. What kind of a Messiah is this? This is one who preaches a different kind of God, at least from their understanding of God. Now, in our day today, we probably have all heard the term, the cutting edge of you know, technology. We in the engineering world 
we kind of reword that a little bit because we understand it a little better. We say it's the bleeding edge of technology because we know that there's a long process between somebody's idea and you know, making that idea manifest. There's a lot of difficulty and sacrifice that goes into that process. Jesus knew what his day was going to be like this week from the beginning to the end. He said it to his disciples over and over again, but they did not understand. You have to understand to a degree that the people in that day and age were very results oriented. They did not have a real grasp of the concept of process at all. Probably the longest process that they could imagine was becoming a Pharisee or a scribe in the temple the way Paul did, because it takes decades. Maybe some of the better thinkers of the day would look at their children growing up as a process. But everybody was really just kind of focused on the annual harvest, the cycle. It didn't seem to be a process. It was just an annual cycle that happened. But Jesus is coming forward with an idea about God that is thought-provoking and well above the understanding of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That's why they got themselves so tied up in knots over Jesus. Because he was preaching something that would turn things upside down. And they had a vested interest in it. After all, their livelihood and their power and their status was all wrapped up in this temple and the structure that had been there since Moses set it up. Who's this stranger who comes with mystical powers of healing the blind, as we heard last week from Bird, and storms into the city with a crowd by Friday? The crowd is going to be disappointed at best, angry at least, and hopeless at worst. For once again, there's a failed Messiah. Failed Messiahs are something even Jesus warns about in the Gospels. And Jewish history is littered with failed Messiahs. Here's one again who promised something special, promised salvation, and shows up with no army. You know, messiahs are supposed to come in with an army and march into a city, take the capital, seize the leaders, kill them, and then declare a new day has arrived. That's the way the world works. That's what they were looking for. And Jesus didn't do this. The point is that Jesus came with a new philosophy in life and asked everybody to understand it, knowing full well it wasn't going to happen. He was essentially asking the understanding of Jerusalem to go from donkey speed to warp speed in seven days or less. Not going to happen in a results-oriented society. And Jesus knew that. And we all knew that. But he came anyway. And we anoint him as king. Crown him with many crowns. Give Lord all honor as the final hymn will say. Yet the story is not finished yet. Because we too have all the same issues that the crowd in Jerusalem had. And we got to give them a little, a little break, all right? 
They're disappointed that they haven't been saved. They were crying out, deliver us now. The Roman army and the taxation, the whole thing. Jesus's philosophy was very different. His idea was one that says, God is in you. And you are in God at the same time. Hard thing to explain. But just because it's a hard thing to explain doesn't mean it isn't so. I mean, there are metaphors that we have to do this with. I've said often, you know, I could explain Einstein's theory of special relativity with a simple ruler and a pencil, no paper required. It's a simple metaphor, but it explains it. And Jesus's ideas can be explained too, but we need to come to the table to learn. The interesting thing is that there's a whole philosophy that is inside us already. And that is the one, the understanding that the spirit is in us when we're born. We know this from the beginning because, you know, since caveman days, we have found cave paintings, ancient cave paintings that depict a concept of God an overarching God. It's like the spirit that's within us pushes us to connect with God. That is what we are called to do from inside. What is harder to understand is that we are also in God at the same time, part of God at the same time. The spirit calls out to the kingdom, what Jesus called the kingdom of God, sort of, you know, begging us to hand him the phone so he, the spirit can phone home. We, on the other hand, we struggle to understand that we're in God. You see, Jesus put forward an idea about God that was one not like human ways, where God is the titular head of a hierarchy, but that rather we are all threaded together with divine threads woven into a giant tapestry together by the threads of God. So we are in this tapestry, which is the kingdom of God, held there by divine thread, and we are in it, and we are part of it. And the powerful piece of it here is that there is something very real to us today in the words, yashana, deliver now. Because as part of the kingdom of God, and be it what you call it, what you will. Jesus called it the kingdom of God. Paul calls it the body of Christ. It's the same thing. It's a common entity that we belong to. And one of the interesting things when you belong to an entity, part of that job of that entity, of your, in that entity is to do things to make that entity work better to succeed at whatever it is trying to do. Doesn't matter if it's a society, a nation, a family, a church. If you're a member, then you should be working to make it better. We are all part of God's entity, however you want to call it. In the caveman days, they didn't have, they created gods and we created many gods with a little g because there was no form or function. 
Jesus came and gave us a sense of form and function to how the kingdom of God works. Not so much to God as to how the kingdom of God works. And that's what he gave us. And that's why the yashina means something. Because we are the carriers of God's grace into this world here, now, today. If someone is crying out for salvation, we are the ones that can deliver God's grace to that person. If we choose to. Or not. But God calls us to be that carrier. Jesus calls us to do what he did. To be the carrier of God's grace into this world with those who need it. Now, it's kind of easy to understand that the spirit is within us. Because the spirit is there and active and pushing to come out. It is harder for us to understand being inside God at the same time. It's not something we can touch. It defies the five senses. But we know from our own experiences that when we believe, we can feel the presence of God. We just need to bring those experiences together to an understanding. And this takes time. This is the process of building up our faith. God gives us lots of examples of it in very little ways if we choose to look at them that way. But each of them builds our faith. But we have to be willing to come to the table, to learn, to hear the word, to practice experiencing God in good times so that we can have it in the hard times. And then when we can have it in the hard times, then we can actually share it with others because we know it's real, because we've experienced it. And that's, you know, when Jesus heals the blind man that we talked about last week. The whole process of faith was in a, a couple of days. Jesus put some saliva mud on his eyes and told him to go wash it in a particular pool. And he came and he could see. The process was compressed. He had results right then. And immediately he had the faith, even not even knowing who Jesus was. He believed. It is hard for us not being able to put our finger in the wounds like Thomas to believe. And Jesus said to Thomas, you believe because you see. Blessed are those who do not see and believe. It is our choice whether we choose to accept the philosophy that Jesus gave us, the form and function of how God works in this world, and to believe it. That's ours to choose to do. Now, that's a long process. It's a lifelong process for us. But there are intermediate results that are very, very beneficial to us. Because when we believe and we become the carriers of God's creation to others, God's salvation to others, we can feel that when it happens. There's a joy that is different from any other kind of human joy I know that happens when you know you've touched someone in a way that their faith is greater or they feel that salvation has come to them in some way. 
there's a wonderful feeling. It's a hopeful feeling. It's a joy unlike anything else. This is what Jesus offers us. A way of seeing a form, a function of our life. Now, there were people in that day that for sure didn't get it. They were results oriented. And there are people today who are very results oriented. But they can still get it. But if your results are in it, and if that's what you need, stay tuned to next week because God's got a whopper of a result that's going to change the world. As we come to prayer this morning, I would like to lift up all those who are struggling with COVID um, in this day and age. There's a new wave happening and it's very sad. And those who are struggling with it, the isolation that they feel, people you know, quarantined um, and isolated, whether they have it or not. So let us lift them up in prayer. And Judy and her family, as she starts treatment for lymphoma, and also uh, we can pray for Peter uh, Randall and, and the family and his sibs and their families as they mourn the loss of Bob Randall, Peter's dad, that died early on Saturday morning. And we also pray for Donna Henry and her family as her sister Debbie passed away on Thursday. So um, after a difficult health battle. So um, with that, let us keep them in mind and come to prayer. Living and loving God, on this joyous day, we offer our thanks and praise to you. Creator of heaven and earth, creator and lover of all humanity. We hear the good news from the crowd that Jesus has come and we cry out too, Yashana. Hosanna, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you. We thank you for teaching us there is more to life than just what we see. We thank you for the gifts that you have given us of life beyond our understanding and a salvation now and always. We thank you for all the blessings and bounty that you share with us. Lord, when you rode into Jerusalem, your people called out to be, so, to be saved. Hosanna, save us now. Lord, even today, we pray for so many of your people who cry out to be saved, saved from hunger, disease, homelessness, war, oppression, loneliness, isolation, and grief. Help us to be the conduits of your salvation in this world. Grant us the strength and the courage to ride into the darkness of our world to bring your light where it is needed. We lift up to you today those we know that need your care in silence. We also lift up to you our feelings of concern and care for them. For when ones we care about suffer, so do we. Lord, please share our burdens that we carry for one another, that we lift up to you in silence.
Lord, we also carry burdens of our own doing. We beg for your mercy. Save us from the things in life that chain us to our bad choices. O oh, Lord God of our salvation, in your mercy, help us to open our hearts that we may enter with you in joy upon the saving grace of those mighty acts of this week. Forgive us for being so focused on our everyday lives that we neglect to listen for you. Forgive us when we fail to make Christ evident through our words, our actions, or our lives. Forgive us for the times we fail to forgive others in our anger or from our fear. Forgive us when we forget that Jesus is here and is wherever believers live and worship. As we come seeking forgiveness for all our faults and shortcomings, help us to reorder our priorities so that we will put Christ first in our lives at all times. Lord, we lift up to you our struggles and our flaws in silence. Forgive us, Lord. Even when we turned away from you, you promised never to neglect us or reject us. Help us to remember all the words you have spoken to us of mercy and love through the prophets and witness of your promise to love us forever with everlasting love. And so with all the company of heaven and earth, we praise your holy name saying, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Yashinah, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All this we pray to you in the name of your son, Christ Jesus, who is resurrected in our hearts. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Jesus is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear, believe, and live the good news. In Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. As we keep the special memory of our Redeemer's entry into Jerusalem, grant also, Lord, that he may triumph in our hearts now and forever. Let the King of grace and glory enter in and let us lay all we are in full and joyful homage before him. The same Jesus Christ, our Lord, may grant us grace to follow where Christ has led. Amen. <laughs>